The questionable state of Hideo Kojima's employment is a story about far more than Hideo Kojima's employment. Politics, vice, and a massive corporate restructuring suggest that his contract is just one of many that has been changed. On March 19, 2015, Konami removed mention of Kojima's name from its executive positions and its Metal Gear Solid websites, and renamed his studio from Kojima Productions Los Angeles to Konami Los Angeles. That same day, while official Twitter accounts were reiterating their commitment to finishing MGS5, an anonymous source came out to GameSpot claiming Kojima was demoted to a contractor, scheduled to leave in December, and that his studio was given limited access to corporate internet, emails, and phone calls. The confusion and negative PR that has resulted has put in place a kind of communications lockdown. On April 14th, I tried reaching out to almost everyone connected with Kojima. Konami's official PR simply told me they have said all they're going to say on this subject, directing me to statements from a month earlier. Social media accounts for much of Kojima Productions have been deleted and are out of reach. When looking at Silent Hills, I called Norman Reedus' publicist, who told me they are not giving interviews about that game right now. Guillermo del Toro's fan mail account told me that the project is still in flux, no comment, before following up a week later on April 26 to tell a different person that the game was cancelled outright. But two people, much closer to Konami, did come out to me about injustices happening there, and one of them was willing to go into specifics. It's someone who wishes to remain anonymous, and before I go on, I want to stress the weakness of anonymous sources. The source could not provide any material proving their claims. Any conversations sourcing their info was not recorded. Although I did verify their position, and I do trust them, I could not verify their information. For that reason, I've been really leery about sitting on top of what I think is good information, but it's not 100% set in stone. So consider what you're about to hear as rumors. All I can completely guarantee is that these rumors were not made up by me. They are rumors that have been circulating among Konami employees as of a week and a half before airing this video. And what they seem to do is clarify and justify a lot of existing facts that have been revealed in this past month. Regardless, the reasons why this person would choose to remain anonymous become clear with these nine words. Hundreds of people are going to lose their jobs. Konami is going to burn the entire MGS franchise to the ground. Frequent blackouts, security doors not working, and people being forced to move their desks are the means by which upper executives are forcing employees to quit on their own terms. And in addition to Kojima's own team getting the axe, so too have the Dance Dance Revolution teams been facing mergers. These are hyperbolic claims, and without any transcripts or paperwork to back them up, I found myself questioning every one of them. The claim that the CEO of Konami plans to, quote, burn the entire MGS franchise to the ground contradicts the company's own earlier statement about continuing Metal Gear after MGS5. They're hiring for it right now, in fact, but outside of the typical Kojima studio, which strengthens the other claims of them closing down Kojima's studio and trying to remove him from the company for the sake of making less expensive products. The internet blackouts and the office inconveniences mentioned here seem like further specifications of the claims made by the GameSpot informant earlier. The source says that the timing of this move, of them dehumanizing Kojima's name away from his products and his studio, is happening months away from the wrap-up of MGS5 to keep them from suing and from speaking out, to essentially keep this scandal under wraps while the whole team is busy finishing up work on their career-defining game. And the overarching message, that Konami is shifting resources away from expensive console games to cheaper mobile and gambling games, and doing it in a way that's far too quick and extreme, unfortunately seems to check out as well. As always, an edited transcript of our communication will be provided below. Until then, I'd like to shed some light on what this person was talking about. Konami's three biggest franchises are, in order, its Winning Eleven Pro Evolution Soccer Series, Metal Gear, and the Bimani Music Games brand, which includes Dance Dance Revolution. But in Japan, Konami has a stake in far more than just video games. They also operate health clubs, as well as numerous gambling products, referenced here in their public financial statement as Gaming and Systems, in contrast to Digital Entertainment, which makes video games as opposed to slots and pachinko machines. And when combined, their non-video gaming businesses completely eclipse their digital entertainment revenue. Not by a wide margin, but not an insignificant one either. 
Kajimasa Kozuki, the 75-year-old founder of Konami, is still managing it as a CEO, and according to my source, a feud between him and Kojima is partially to blame for their breakup. It's likely that only their personal acquaintances know if that's actually true, but we do know that Kajimasa has invested in gambling, which is currently illegal in Japan. A political movement to legalize it has moved along last year up until hitting legislative gridlock in November 2014. And this was around the time Contra slots were revealed. We've got some great licensed product in Dungeons & Dragons, and we've got a new and exciting product that cracks into the Konami Digital Entertainment Library called Neo Contra. On Tuesday, March 24th, five days after the Kojima story broke, Japanese lawmakers announced a move to resubmit last year's failed casino legislation, to be decided on in April. Once April arrived, Konami updated the Silent Hills website to remove the Koji Pro logo, with the company saying they've switched from a studio-based to a headquarters-based organization. Which falls in line with what I was told on April 13th, with the insider telling me that the Dance Dance Revolution team has been merged with unrelated audio engineers, with employees no longer working on specific games as a team, but multiple games at once as a larger group. On the 16th and the 20th, I heard from Redis' publicist and Del Toro that they didn't want to talk about the state of Silent Hills. And on the 26th, it was announced that the Silent Hills playable teaser will be removed for downloading on the 29th. One day later, Del Toro announced at a Q&A that the game wasn't going to be happening at all. So if you were getting your hopes up for Silent Hills, or for big glamorous Konami console games in general, you probably shouldn't. A lot of this information comes from unofficial secondary sources. A lot of it is speculation. But what it all seems to do is clarify some incredibly weird but confirmed facts that have been happening this past month. MGS5 may be Kojima's last hurrah, and it also comes as a long overdue wrap-up to this series, which was originally scheduled to finish with the second game in 2001. Metal Gear Solid sequels have always been some of the most expensive video games to produce, and sales have been slowing down since its first two games. At this point, Konami may no longer see the returns for an MGS sequel as high as number six, with the series' continuity only appealing to more dedicated fans as the story gets more complicated. However, the brand still carries significant weight, as seen by the successes of non-Kojima, non-Metal Gear Solid spin-offs like Metal Gear Rising. Metal Gear is still one of Konami's three biggest sales pillars, and it's unlikely that we won't see similar spin-offs in the future. But whether or not Kojima works on them, or whether or not they have anything to do with the mainline series, is far more questionable. Nothing lasts forever, and the end of Metal Gear Solid had to come eventually. Each game has been written as if it was the last for the past decade, and now conditions seem primed for that to finally happen. But I doubt anyone wanted to see it end like this, with a fight between two executives leading to absolutely petty problems for their staff, and the likely cancellation of what could have been a great game for the rest of us. After 30 years of service, making probably billions of dollars in revenue for his employers, it's hard to imagine Konami suddenly treating Kojima this poorly. We'll see for sure what's going to happen to him after Metal Gear Solid 5 launches. Until then, I'll try to stay optimistic. Remember that most of what's discussed here is based on rumors, not set in stone, and thus very likely to change as the year goes on. But at this point in history, it's hard to hope for the best anymore.